Hello and welcome to Psychological Insights. Both parents and adult children fail to recognize how profoundly the rules of family life have changed over the past half century. So how does that translate in real life? Well, for one thing, it used to be that parents would divorce their adult children because of religious differences, intermarriage, intercultural marriage, choice of lifestyle, divorce, all sorts of different things. But now the tables have turned. Adult children are divorcing their parents. Why? Today we'll be speaking to Dr. Robert Hahn. He's a psychologist in West Hartford Center. And the topic of the day is estrangement. I'm Pat Kazakoff. Stay with me. Hello, Dr. Ham. Hello, Pat. So, what happened? How have the norms of American life resulted in this switch? What went on? Uh, well, yes, I think in the past, um, what? maybe uh, 70 years, perhaps, um, especially since uh, post-World War II uh, here in the United States, there has been a cultural shift. Uh, and many writers at that time, sociologists, psychologists, were making note and writing books about it, um, where uh, we had seen at that time, this is the 1950s, the boomer generation was just emerging uh, a level of prosperity that uh, we had never seen before. Um, and I think that there had been changes in the family, in the institutions uh, in the United States, family, uh, religious in institutions, community that were shifting along with that, uh, that um, created a more nuclear kind of uh, family situation, an, an increasing degree of autonomy and uh, uh, with it, the downside, um, a more of a kind of isolationist and psychological mindedness uh, that existed in our culture. So these are the shifts I think that uh, have contributed to changes in our relations among uh, members of family. That you're what? But why specifically this kind of change? Like what happened that, you know, we're, we're not divorcing our children anymore for lifestyle changes. We're accepting lifestyle changes. We're accepting intermarriage. What, what, what's the big shift that's making, that's turning this upside down? Yeah, well, I think, uh, again, it, it's uh, that we become a more um, sort of isolationist, uh, uh, independent, are here in the United States, not elsewhere um, exactly. So many of the more um, so-called advanced uh, uh, nations, uh, westernized cultures, so to speak, I think that we've become much more autonomous. Uh, I mean, this goes way back, you know, to our our history here in the, in the West. You know, since this country was founded, based on this ethic of individualism. Um, but I think that uh, since we've emerged with a much more prosperous nation, post-World War II especially, we've become very consumerist. Um, you and I have talked about this a bit in one of our previous shows. Um, and with that, uh, uh, and, and with consumerism, a higher standard of living, uh, not just materially, but also in terms of what we expect in our relationships and our quality of life. Um, and so that's a good thing. It's just, you know, it's one of the benefits of success. Um, but with the, the downside of that is that often uh, people then suffer uh, from not reaching what they believe they should reach since the bar has been raised considerably. Um, and we become much more psychologically minded. People are in therapy, mental health issues are becoming more normalized, destigmatized. Uh, so we're much more psychologically minded. We're, we have more 
uh, uh, concern about uh, our rights, our, our sense of identity. Uh, so what, what I'm extrapolating from you is that there's more of a concentration on personal growth and the buzzword, the pursuit of happiness. I often hear parents saying to me, all I want is my children to be happy. I don't recall my family, my parents ever saying, all I want is my children to be happy. I recall them saying, what I want them to do is get a job. That's a yeah. different concentration. Well, I mean, that's the price of, as I say, I think that's the price of success. The, the bar has been raised. We expect more of life. And therefore, we're much more susceptible to being disappointed when we don't reach those standards. And we look for victims, people to blame. Um, and uh, so, and, uh, you know, our, my field in psychology is partly to blame for this, I think, uh, that we have created unwittingly uh, this idea that everybody uh, deserves to be happy and has to reach certain kinds of standards in order to be happy. And I think it's, it's uh, we've kind of shot, shot ourselves in the foot to some degree. Uh, uh, when people uh, sort of misconstrue what that means, it means that uh, you have to, uh, what Maslow called self-actualization. Uh, so you fit that into this kind of, uh, of our culture, which is very achievement oriented. And you have a formula, unfortunately, for a lot of dissatisfaction, uh, a lot of uh, disappointment in ourselves and in our lives. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a bit of an irony. Well, so what I'm hearing if, is that the conflicts are now more psychological than they are material. And the reason for that is because we've got more wealth, we've got more time, we've got more everything. And so people, people, have, people are using estrangement as a, as a, a mode of personal expression. Yeah, I, um, I guess you might say it's an outgrowth of it, um, that it's a, it's a consequence, I guess you would say, unfortunately, in some instances. Um, but I, I don't think it's quite as simple as I just uh, painted. Um, but I think that is a, 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 the you know changes in our economy and our prosperity uh, so since for, uh, World War II. Yeah. For the people who are listening, why don't we be, um, I want to focus a little bit more this word estrangement. It's a big word. Right. Can you define what estrangement is? Because I'm concerned mm -hmm. that people are listening and might say, well, Am I really estranged? I mean, I talk to my child at Christmas. Isn't that good? So what exactly is estrangement? Uh, well, I, I think it's um, the, our standard uh, sort of generic uh, usage of the term means that you're not, uh, you're no longer in a relationship, right? Um, but not everyone has the same uh, sort of understandings in the family members. Uh, some people do have, a, you know, we might call it an attenuated uh, relationship with family. Oh, we only see them on holidays, um, or I call maybe once every couple of months. And, and for some adult children uh, of parents, that isn't estrangement, but it's an attenuation, if you will. They, they're trying to put up those boundaries they're creating distance deliberately uh, for whatever reasons, the issues in the family. So let's, some, talk, let's talk about those issues. So what are the causes of estrangement? What are the common causes why adult children um, choose to divorce their parents? Uh, well, I think that uh, you can put that, those uh, causes um, in, in two categories. In, um, in my mind, one is uh, that something has happened in the past, uh, that children have a, a grievance with how their parents raised them. It's very common. <laughs> Again, this is our psychologically minded culture, you know, and maybe we could blame Freud for this. Um, but our childhoods, we believe, uh, and I think there's a lot of truth to it, are formative experiences and who more easily 
can we blame than our parents, of course, since they're the ones that were there to raise us. Uh, so there are grievances from the past. Uh, the parents, so children see their problems in the present, right, as a function of how they were raised. The other category is that when you have a parent um, or parents, whatever the case may be, where there, where there are problems that are current, uh, that uh, the parents are difficult, uh, or there are certain issues that are going on in the family, uh, that uh, especially when it comes to boundaries, uh, which is- a I'm, I'm, in, I'm interested in that word boundaries, mm. because that's a term that I hear being used a lot by psychologists. I don't want to blame an entire profession, but what does this mean boundaries? If, you ha if your child hasn't spoken to you in like three years, I think the boundary is pretty good, isn't it? Nobody's bothering anybody. So what are you talking about when you say boundaries? Yeah, well, yeah, boundaries is setting uh, limits on, you know, your involvement, um, usually, right? But I mean, if, if uh, children are setting such uh, strict boundaries as they end up talking to their parents once every three years, it's usually because they, it's a reaction, isn't it? Uh, that they feel that their boundaries are not respected or they've been violated. Uh, and so they have to be that much more stringent, uh, unfortunately, in setting boundaries. Well, what I'm, what I'm also hearing from parents um, is that children, um, adult children, are rewriting history. Well, uh, yes, I mean, I think that's true, um, but it's not just uh, children of, of parents who read. We all rewrite history. We all have our interpretations. Uh, History is revisionist. That's, I mean, that's most people uh, understand that today. History books uh, are to some degree fiction uh, or perspective rather than fact. Um, so, and we know that our memories are uh, selective. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, there is this uh, uh, sort of disconnection amongst family members when you see your past, even siblings, one sibling will say, gee, the, uh, this is what our household was like. And another one say, no, as if they had grown up in different households. Uh, their memories and how they interpreted things are so different that it's as if they weren't even siblings. So as a psychologist, um, uh, a parent comes in to you and says to you, um, my, my, my child isn't talking to me. The, my child had the best life possible, an enviable life that I didn't have. And um, they're doing they're 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 doing this at the same time. The adult child walks into your office and says, "My parents are gaslighting me. My parents um, d never cared about my feelings or my thoughts." So, how do you, as a psychologist, determine what is true and what is false? Um. Well, or, does it, or does it matter what is true or what is false? What matters is perception. Yeah, I, well, I, I think that yeah, I, I, it is important to try to get at some objective facts. But yes, it is. A, once again, it's a matter of perspective. Um, so that, you know, regardless of, I mean, I think that we do want to find out, was there actual abuse going on, uh, if we can? Uh, parents and children don't always agree, and our and our definitions of abuse can be different. Uh, but I think that often this estrangement comes from what I was just saying earlier uh, today, Pat. That when parents say, "I don't understand it. I was really good. I gave everything to my children," but children are using often uh, because of this generational change and the shift in our culture is a different standard by which we judge. Uh, you know uh, what is good parenting. So a parent might say, I gave you everything materially, but if we're emerging out of a materially oriented culture that now uh, is prosperous enough, prosperous enough to be more psychological to this standard, children are using a different measure. And they're saying, well, yeah, you gave me a lot of material things, but that's a substitute for the love and attention. 
children, you know, because of this shift, you understand. And so there's this disconnection in how parents and children, let's in this example, so, uh, how that, uh, you know, that breakdown in communication and perceptions takes place. So I'm seeing a conflict yeah. here because at the same time as the child is saying, um, you didn't pay attention to my needs. You didn't, uh, you didn't love me the way I wanted to be loved. Uh, the, the conflict is at the same time, you're, this child is also saying, commonly saying, you have no respect for my boundaries. So what is it? Are you too involved or are you not involved enough? Like you can't have it both ways. And well, I'm looking both ways. <laughs> well, I don't know. There's a, uh... This reminds me of a movie uh, that, uh, that came out about 20 years ago with Mickey Rourke, uh, um, uh, Marissa Tomei, called The Wrestler. I don't know if you've seen it. No, uh, I can't say I have. No, that <laughs> one I haven't said. That's a little up too obtuse for me. Um, I'm into Sound of Music, that one I've known, or yeah. Mary Poppins, but when you're bringing up something way out of my league. Well, anyway, I mean, it's, I don't think it won any Oscars, but it was, I thought it was a really good movie and it speaks to this issue that you're bringing up here. So it's about a guy, he's a wrestler and he uh, is not, he was separated from his uh, wife. Um, and so the daughter was now uh, in college and uh, she has, holds a real grudge against her father because he wasn't there. So, the father, you know, it comes to a realization, hey, you know, I neglected, he tries to make up, too late. Uh, so he, he, she gives him, a, uh, she tries to give him another chance and he screws up, makes a mistake and he's out and she sets the boundaries and she estranges himself. She's resentful because of all the past. And so he's on, he's on notice and so he makes one mistake and, and that's, you know, and, and that's uh, enough for her to a stranger's uh, so, yes, uh, uh, parents, you know, maybe they, what, as children get older, they, they don't understand, they want more involvement, but children, if they're holding resentment about the past, they say, it's, it's too late, you can't make up for what I needed when I was younger, and now, now I don't need it, now you want the attention, well, hey, you know, it's too late, uh, you missed the crucial period of my life when I needed it, uh, so where were you then? What benefits does the adult child, I know that the, um, that the parent gets absolutely no benefits from the adult child's estrangement, but I have to assume that the adult child gets some benefits from estrangement, otherwise they wouldn't do it. What are the benefits that the adult child gets? Well, it's a, it's a double-edged sword, of course. I mean, I think there's a, uh, uh, the benefit that you're referring to is to, uh, it, one is it validates the self. Uh, it also removes, uh, if there are current issues, it removes them from a toxic uh, um, relationship. Uh, but the downside of course is, especially as uh, people get older, is that you lose uh, that connection with family, the holidays, uh, spending time with grandchildren, and just, you know, all, the benefits that a family can uh, give give a person. Um, but I wanted to say another thing, but I mean, I think that another reason why children, adult children are, are estranging is that uh, there's been a, there's a much higher divorce rate today. Uh, so more single parent families. Um, and so uh, I think it, in uh, the relationships I, I've noticed between parents and children has changed since you know, uh, when I was a child, over the years, uh, there was a much stricter uh, sort of division between generations. Today, you see more enmeshment, and I think partly because uh, there are more single parent parenting families now, uh, that uh, you see more uh, uh, friendships. Uh, parents are depending more on their children. Uh, their uh, children are given much more um, we call this the helicopter parent, uh, much more attention, much more emphasis is given to their psychological welfare and uh, their achievement more than ever, involvement. But with that, children are feeling smothered, 
uh, and uh, wanting to set boundaries. Uh, so part of it is the greater investment that parents are giving to their children than ever before. Um, and part of it is, I think, that their higher divorce rate parents are uh, so substituting, you know, th their involvement with, you know, what would have been a spouse, a partner, now with their children, uh, so that there is an enmeshment uh, that children are responding to, adult children. So you're telling me um, divorce is one of the very common, uh, uh, estrangement is a common result of divorce, but estrangement is also uh, a common result of too much parenting, inappropriate parenting, expectations uh, of children that don't quite make sense. Yeah, it, it's, it's unfortunate because I think this kind of over-involvement uh, uh, of parents in, in this generation creates a narcissism on the parts of the children, a, a sense of entitlement. Um, but on the other hand, uh, it, it comes back to want of parents and that a parent, their child, as they get older, uh, they uh, are, want to create that distance uh, and they are uh, much more attuned to their, their own needs. If they're more narcissistically oriented and uh, easily wounded by their parents. And so it comes back to haunt the parent. The child is more, therefore, susceptible to uh, uh, distancing themselves from their parents or easily slighted by their parents. I'm going to ask you a hard question. Um, it's a two-part question, but the first part is, so there are people who are watching this who don't have adult children yet. What can they do to prevent this phenomenon actively? Uh, well, I, I think that um, it is important to, to um, teach children uh, to, uh, to become independent um, and to accept responsibility in life so that they don't uh, develop a sense of entitlement. And uh, I think it is good to have, I think it's important for parents to take good care of themselves in their own personal lives uh, uh, rather than using the child, um, not, not deliberately, uh, but they become more dependent on their child uh, for um, intimacy or, or I think social needs uh, or psychological needs. Um, but um, I think that uh, uh, if, if it does occur, when, you know, this estrangement that we're discussing today, I think that uh, it is important for parents to uh, listen to their children. The children have grievances, even if they don't agree, if your histories as you remember them are different, uh, I think that it's healing, even if you don't agree with your children. Um, I think it is important that if, if you have been uh, guilty, that it's so important to uh, admit those transgressions if you can. Um, but uh, if you don't, it, it, at least to listen. Uh, because uh, today, uh, you know, uh, because we're psychologically minded, uh, it, it's so important for people to feel validated. We want to be heard. We want our, our own in, um, sense, of, sense of identity to be acknowledged uh, and recognized. And so you don't have to agree about your histories in order to create healing. Uh, just uh, being able to listen, and you can d disagree to disagree, and that in itself can bring uh, family members that have been estranged back together. So I'm hearing uh, you're 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 launching into you're launching the answer into my second question. But what I'm hearing is, when your child is young and they come up with, um, I, I heard a parent once told me that you know they were killing themselves for their, their child because he had all sorts of hospital issues and back and forth and traveling and and the child said, you know, I don't really love you. In fact, I don't really care about you at all. In fact, I wish you weren't around. And it's a child. It's, yeah. a, it's a child. Are you supposed to listen to that? Are you supposed to say, well, I can understand. I mean, how do you respond to those kinds of obvious, obvious um, complaints or grievances? 
Uh, well, how can a parent give that validation? It's just so difficult to do. Yes, it's very hurtful. Uh, I think it's important for a parent to uh, try to work on. Sometimes you need a psychologist on you to help or a therapist, not to personalize it. I mean, how can you not personalize it? I understand, but to understand that uh, even if you're not as guilty as the child sees you as being, to understand it as it's not a reflection necessarily uh, entirely of history, what's actually happened, but rather it's a reflection what your child is grieving about or saying. It's more about their perspective and, and their feelings. That uh, the child doesn't care. It says, oh, I don't care about you. It, it may not necessarily mean they don't care about you, but it's their way of saying, I want more distance. I want you to give me more some space, uh, but it gets, sort of uh, it translated uh, you know, in the child's mind differently. They're just trying to push the parent away. And they're doing a poor job of it, but you know, they may not know any better and they may not be able to understand themselves well enough. It's a parent uh, who has to do the work in trying to translate that in a different way so they don't personalize it. So they were able to understand and interpret that statement that instead of being, I need some distance here, you're hovering, you're, you're enmeshed, uh, you're too involved, uh, rather than you're a, um, you know, a lousy parent, or I, I hate you, uh, you're a bad person. Uh, so there is some, you know, sometimes you need a therapist to help you translate that properly. That makes a lot of sense to me, and it gives me some insight, like to, to, to sort of take your mind and don't listen to the words but listen to the intention of the child and respond to the intention as opposed to the words, which is a yeah, little yeah. difficult. Yes. I mean, that's, I, that's, I, what I'm, that's what I'm hearing from you. Respond yeah. to the intention, not to the words. Yeah, uh, I, I think that uh, if you, you have to suspend some of that personalization because otherwise uh, the tragedy is many parents get defensive they say, no, I never did that. And uh, how, how dare you? You're so ungrateful. And then, of course, that only gets things worse. So another, so the, so the final question, the sort of the, the piece de resistance here is you're now in an estranged relationship, uh, two, three, four, five years. The parent is still suffering. How does one resolve an estrangement of that length of time when the child doesn't, which is common in estrangement, does not respond to letters, does not respond to email, doesn't show up at any family events. How does, how does one turn that situation around? What does the parent have to do or the child, like who has to do something and what is it they have to do? Yeah, well, I mean, it's, from a parent's uh, perspective, not a lot can be done uh, if someone refuses to have anything to do with you, what are you going to do? I mean, sometimes you can get an intermediary, a sibling, family member who will be a go-between uh, to try to get a rapprochement. And sometimes that works, but sometimes it doesn't. What's the percentage of working versus non-working? Do you have a, a little bird's eye view? I'd say in most instances, it doesn't work. Okay, now that's, the, that's the answer. That's the answer I didn't want to hear. That's the answer I got. But it's worth a try. There's nothing to lose. But uh, I wanted to say from a child's perspective, what I do when I have a, a patient, adult children, stranger or parent, uh, they're in this situation and we discuss the issue. I try to sort, uh, try to help them make a distinction between are the issues that your, grie uh, your grievances are about, are they about the past or the present? Uh, so if they're about the past, I mean, I say, well, have you tried to talk with your parent? Give them a, a chance. If the parent gets defensive and said, no, there's, you know, there's no way, uh, then, you know, you have your answer and you uh, can either, you know, have an attenuated relationship with them, you know, you can't go there or you can estrange, it's up to you, but you, you're not going to change your parent's mind about that. It's just... It's going to be, you know, always uh, something that will be uh, on. You won't be able to deal with that. You have to quarantine that if you want a relationship with them. But if the issues are current, that's different, and that complicates things. 
So if a parent doesn't uh, uh, respect a, parent, uh, a child's boundaries uh, with their children or their grandchildren, uh, I think it, uh, it, the child of, of the parent has to respect, uh, you know, uh, has to in, in, uh, make it clear to the parent that uh, the parents have to respect their boundaries. Uh, and uh, when there's enmeshment for the parent that feels a sense of entitlement, uh, that has to get negotiated in and of itself. And, and sometimes that involves a parent and a child getting involved in therapy, working through their issues that are current, that have to do with boundaries. Uh, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, and, and that's different than dealing with grievances in the past. Uh, where you can uh, set that aside, and it, it does, I think, to limit the relationship to some degree. But you can continue a relationship. But if the problem is current, it can it's it's still present, and it can be sufficient reason for that estrangement to continue. I mean, we've been talking uh, for about uh, you know thirty minutes now, and it's a very big topic. But the conclusion that I come to is that the only way estrangement can be solved is if both parties want it to be solved. And if one party doesn't want it to be solved, nothing is going to happen. No amount of psychological uh, input or insight. I mean, I'm listening to you and I find it very interesting, the, the insight um, you know, to, to to understand the child has a has a has a different point of history sees history differently than you see it and that's fine that's just normal that's not abnormal understand that the child's grievances whether they're uh, founded or not they are the child's grievances and they deserve to be heard no matter what but that's if the right. child if the yeah. child doesn't want to have anything to do with you um, there's not much you can do about that. No, I mean, you're only making matters worse if you say, hey, you know, get over it. That was the past. You know, look what I had to deal with. When I, that's the last thing children want to hear. <laughs> you know, oh, when I was a kid, I had to walk five miles to school. You know, and, and children will just throw up their arms and, you know, just, uh, yeah, that's uh, only going to make matters worse. You, know, you do need to listen. Well, so thank you very much. And your final word is you do need to listen. And those are uh, uh, very important words. Uh, I guess many of us don't listen enough or listen to ourselves before we listen to somebody else. And it's a strong lesson. Um, so thank you very much, Dr. Ham. And uh, thank, you. thank you very much. And you're watching Psychological Insights. Um, I'm Pat Kazakoff. You've been listening to Dr. Robert Hamm. He's a psychologist in West Hartford Center. Thank you.